I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be talking about the use of Agile methods for the development of large and complex software systems. Let's start by looking at the characteristics of these complex systems which distinguish them from smaller programs, apps or even medium-sized systems. Large systems are not usually just individual systems but are made up of a number of separate independent systems. The fact that large systems have a number of communicating systems is one thing but these systems are often developed and managed by different teams they may be in different time zones and it's very difficult to get a coherent picture of how these systems operate, how they're managed. It may be impossible to make changes to some of these systems because the, to any changes would compromise their use for their principal purpose. Brownfield development. Systems or new systems being developed are not going in to a clean environment. They're going into an environment where there are already hundreds of terabytes often of data, not always in very good condition, and lots of other systems that they have to interface with. The developers of new systems don't have a free hand in what they can do. And what we find is that many of the requirements for the new system come from the fact that it's in this brownfield environment. It has to interoperate with these other systems. And critically for agile development, these are not the kind of requirements that can be developed through an iterative process, through user stories. They're requirements that come very much from the solid characteristics of existing systems and they have to be documented in advance. Large systems have very diverse stakeholders from different parts of an organisation or from different organisations and these stakeholders may have very different needs and requirements. So the idea there can be a single stakeholder representative that can present the views of all of them is really not credible and it's very difficult, practically impossible in fact, to bring all of these stakeholders into the development process. So another fundamental aspect of agile development becomes much more difficult. There may be regulatory constraints. An external regular may place rules and regulations which affect the development of the system. So again, the developers can, are not free to make the design choices that they might want to make. External regulation is important, particularly for critical systems, because a regulator can say whether or not a system may be deployed and put into use. And there are various regulations that have to be followed. It's not just safety regulations, but there are accounting regulations in the US, the Sarbanes-Oxley regulations, that have to be followed precisely to ensure compliance. One way that regulators check the compliance is to prescribe how certain things are done. So there isn't the freedom and flexibility in an agile approach that can be applied here. There's lots of configuration in the development. It's not just a process of writing programs. Their existing systems have, be, have to be adapted and configured to work in that environment. System configuration is not something that can be readily done in an incremental way. It's often the case that we configure existing systems to provide some functionality but we can't sort of semi-configure them to provide part of that functionality. We have to do all of the configuration. So if this is a complex configuration exercise, it can't necessarily be done in a single agile iteration. And finally, the procurement process for a large system, which may cost tens or hundreds of millions of pounds or dollars, can take place over a very long time. And during that time, many other things change and that affects the requirements for the system. A consequence of the long procurement time is that it's very difficult to keep a single team together throughout the procurement and the development of a large system. So it's more difficult at least to implement informal information sharing which is such a fundamental part of agile development. There are a number of approaches that have been proposed for the development of 
large and complex systems. And they all have to think about how plan-based and agile development can be integrated. A number of companies have looked at the issues of scaling up agile. And one of the most useful models, I think, is the model produced by IBM, which looks on this as a, a three-stage process. At the core are fundamental agile principles that have to be pr preserved. These fundamental principles are to focus on customer value so that you deliver things which give the customer most value. They are to minimize documentation, focus on the implementation rather than the documentation of the system and to empower the team, to give the team members responsibility to take decisions, to work independently where required to improve the quality of the system. The next stage is where there are some elements of plan-based development that have to be integrated with an agile approach. Here we're talking about kind of medium-sized systems, not very large systems, but systems which are too large for a single team to develop. In those circumstances, while the core agile principles are preserved, a good deal more attention has to be paid to risk. What are the risks and problems that could arise and planning and mitigating that risk in advance. There's a recommendation of the need for documentation for communications and of a more structured approach to requirements engineering so that requirements for the system are available. And then as systems get larger the whole agility at scale approach has to kick in. Here we're really integrating plan-based and agile development, but with the, the, the elements of each dependent on the type of system and the expertise of the people involved. I've already talked in a previous video about the kind of things that need to be considered. We need to think about the team size, the geographic distribution, the type of system, the organization, the regulation, the technical and the organizational complexity. What we find when we're using Agile for large systems engineering is that a, an incremental or a completely incremental approach to requirements is, 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 is infeasible. It's, it cannot work. There needs to be a much more structured and disciplined requirements phase so that we have a, a bigger picture, a better picture of the system requirements in advance. Not necessarily in great detail, requirements can be refined later, but we need an overall picture of what these requirements are. There can't be a single product or customer representative. Again, we get that information from the requirements, but we may need to bring in different people during the process to understand and develop these requirements in more detail. It isn't possible to just have a code-focused approach. Documentation is important to support the longevity of the system, to support communications across distributed teams. There needs to be an explicit, explicit attention paid to how different teams will communicate with each other so that the whole development process is properly integrated. The idea of continuous integration where as soon as some work has been done, it's checked in and built into the system so that there's always a working and tested system is in most cases impossible. Not necessarily in every case because it depends on how the system is structured, but in most cases it's impossible. But it's important to have frequent system builds, such as a daily system build, to make sure that the system is still on track for development. In summary then, Agile methods as they stand, can't really be used for large and complex system development. But what we can do is to take the best of these methods and to bring them into that large system development process, integrating them with a more plan-based approach that's currently the norm.